Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Let me show you what we got going here. Shackle, shackle, big shackle. Broken car. So this 2001 Toyota Camry is uh, my uncle-in-law's and he happens to live right across the street from my house. And I just happened to dabble in working on cars. So uh, we're gonna tow this thing over to my house and take a crack at fixing it. You ready? I don't know if you heard that, but he was in park. He's obviously never done this before. Yeah, it works a lot better when you put it in neutral. Perfect, dude, you're like a pro. All right, we'll get this thing unlatched here. You want to just, uh... Actually, it's fine. You can it clean in the sunlight. Damn. Oh, man. Scratched it. Oh, oh. oh man. Dang. It'll buff out. You think it'll buff out? Yeah, I think it'll buff out. All right, okay. Good. Run faster! He's obviously never ran a day in his life. <laughs> the mustache kills my athleticism points. Oh. All right. Okay, so I guess uh, are you get in the door panel, the passenger side. All right. And you, I'll get in this door panel and you push from the back. Okay, so here's the plan. We're trying to get it up those ramps, but it's just not working. So here's a little army trick I learned in the Navy. Neither of which I was in. All right, so you can kind of start to see what the plan is here. Let's get our rim. Is she gonna move though? Navy trick worked, bro. Were you in the army? Uh, Boy Scouts. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Decorated Navy background. Worked, hmm. Okay. I don't want to just go around saying that I was in the military. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That seriously. <laughs> Terry. All right, what's up guys? It is the next day. We are back here working on this 2001 Toyota Camry. So last night we pulled all the spark plugs in order to check the compression. And I don't know, I don't know what the actual firing order of this engine is, but I'm going to be referring to this as cylinder one, two, three, and four. Cylinders one through three were clean. Spark plugs look good. Cylinder four, the spark plug tube was full of oil and the spark plug was completely coated with oil. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I pulled all the spark plugs. This is what cylinders, well, the first three cylinders, one, two, three, I'm gonna call them. Cylinder four looked like this, all covered in oil. Well, and I'll cut in clips right here, but cylinder four right here had 30 PSI of compression. This one had 60, and these two had 90. So there's something going on with these two cylinders, and I believe it's somewhere in the head gasket. So the first thing we're gonna do is crawl down underneath here and take this exhaust manifold off. We need to get that thing out of the way in order to make some room and it's gonna to need to come off anyway. We'll get everything done underneath the car that we need to get done before we drain the coolant, this, well, this milkshake that's left in the radiator. And that way we won't have to be crawling around buckets of nasty stuff and avoiding spills and stuff like that when I'm crawling around under there. So let's get to it. And the other reason I think it's a head gasket failure is if you look down in the radiator there, you can see that kind of white brownish mixture, kind of looks like a milkshake. That's coolant and oil mixed together. And generally, the only way that happens is when the head gasket fails between a coolant and an oil passage uh, somewhere in the cylinder head. So, Or it could be a cracked block. That's definitely what you don't want. Cracked block is a bad day, but we're going to hope for the best. We'll get the head gasket off here and see what happens. 
All right, so we got the exhaust flange bolts out. Take them over here. Drop them in a little Ziploc bag and label them. All right, bagged and labeled. Not gonna show that to you every time, but we're gonna try to keep doing that, so. All right, let's get to the next part here, which is gonna be going ahead and taking these bolts off for the rest of the exhaust manifold. All right, so these are all 15 mils. Looks like we got one, two on top, three there, four, five, and six on the bottom. So two on top, four on the bottom. One of them looks like it's behind the alternator, which might be a little bit hard to get to, but we'll figure it out. Then we'll just unplug the O2 sensor here, and voila. There's our six bolts. Next thing we're gonna do is get this alternator out of the way. So first and foremost, looks like we're gonna just wanna undo this little wire harness thing here. Get that out of the way. Looks like a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal. Damn off. All right, so in order to get this alternator off, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove this bolt right here that holds that side of the alternator on. Actually, you can go ahead and just leave it in there for now, just so it has something to pivot on. And then you're gonna take this and run that down to take the tension off the belt. So take your 14. Actually, that's not a 14. Suppose that's 13. Suppose that's 12. So run that down. Actually, first, loosen that. All right, loosen that up. Then you can go ahead and start running this down. Actually, that's my mistake. Looks like you're gonna back it out. All right, so after you get that bolt out and you just kind of leave it in there as a pivot point, go ahead and run this one out, loosen it up a little bit, and then you're gonna take this and run it outward those are both 12 meter meter that's 12 meter this is a 12 millimeter this one back here is a 14. so go ahead and run that out and you'll see the belt starts to loosen up that'll be good then you'll go ahead and slip the belt off and this alternator will come out just as soon as you take out this bolt here all right so for stuff like this i'll just run the bolt back into its home so that's the bolt that went through that adjustment block there. I'll just run it back into there and leave it there. And then for this one, we'll slide it out. And then the alternator should just wiggle right out. Of course, it's never as easy as, as that. That's some wiggles back and forth. And there she is. All right, guys, so we're making progress little by little. Let me fill you back in on where we're at. So we got the we got the throttle body taken off. It's just these three bolts right here, and then a couple of hoses, the throttle cables, and I could have just left the throttle cables hooked up because all I did was really just tuck it out of the way. Uh, the other thing I did was took off these three bolts slash nuts right here. There was one nut there. There's one bolt in where'd it go? You know, you can't really see it. Oh, there we go. There's two bolts between the coil packs right there. There's one upper one and one lower one way down there. You can kind of see the sh glisten from it. But got those taken off. And I also got the intake box out of the way. It's not critical that you do that, but it does clear up a little bit of extra room. So next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take this off. Um, that is the upper engine mount. So when you're taking that off, you're gonna wanna take a jack and support the engine from underneath. 
All right, so next thing we're gonna wanna do is start getting this intake removed here. So let me jump underneath the car. We'll see if I can get a decent shot here. So this, this intake manifold is split into two halves. You have two runners for the first two cylinders and then two runners over here for the other two cylinders. And each of them are gonna be identical in the way you take them off. So on this first one, you have two bolts, one right there and one right there. You got those two bolts right there. Those would be on the bottom part of the engine. You got the two bolts right here that you see that little black hose separating right there and there. And those are the center ones. And then you have another two bolts on the bottom of the other two runners on the other side. You can see one right there. There are my thumbs blocked. Where are my fingers at? Here, you can see one right there and one right there when it comes back into focus. Boom and boom. So those are all the bottom ones, and then you're gonna have one on either end that's gonna be more of a nut. And then you'll have a couple more bolts on the top half. So you're gonna wanna get all those intake manifold bolts taken off, and then you can push it away from the cylinder head. After that, what you can do is start to drain the coolant and the radiator, because you're not gonna need to get underneath the car anymore. And then we can start working on, at that point we can start working on getting the fuel injector rail taken out and getting the timing set all taken out. So that involves getting the engine set at top dead center, getting all the timing marks lined up and removing the timing cover and the timing belt tensioner. So we'll get to that. All right, come on in here and take a look. So, we got everything out of the way of the cylinder head. Intake manifolds just kind of hanging there. Took the cams out, took the timing belt out. That's just dangling right here. We're gonna have to end up replacing that. But uh, this cylinder head should be ready to pull off. So I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna give it a yank and see if I can't get it to come out. Oh, missed one. What is that? Oh, bigger than a 12. No, it's 12. That's lucky. Take that out. Ah, oh, shoot. Still attached back here. Well, you don't find all the points you're still attached to until you start pulling on it. It seems like. There's another bracket. And what else? There's a, like a oh, the connector here. It's like the cam position sensor. And a another ground. I need to tape this up or something so I don't forget about this ground right here. I'll shove it in there. Holy freaking Hannah Montana, guys. That is no bueno. Let's take a look at this cylinder head and see what she looks like on the underside. Well, it doesn't look like we bent any valves. All right, so I guess we need to check and see if this thing's still flat. The valves all look like they're okay. So I can see if it's still flat and we'll check the cross hatching and the piston or the cylinder walls because if all this grime was getting in there tearing up those cylinder walls then the sleeves might be toast but we'll check that out all right guys we're going to wrap it up for today in the next one we're going to replace that timing belt and the head gasket we'll put everything back together got everything cleaned up for today parts are all laid out and ready to go i just need to get the new stuff ordered up and get it all put back together and we'll see that in the next video dang guys look at that freaking crazy sunset behind me Wow. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Tune into the next one where we put this thing back together and see if she fires up. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Adios, guys.